In this video, we're going to walk through some of the feature differences between the free version of Figma and the pro version of Figma. So if you go to figma.com or click the link in the description, which is an affiliate link to help support this channel, and you sign up for Figma, you can also go to the pricing page. Inside the pricing page, you can see that there is a starter and there's also a professional tier. Now you have organization and enterprise, which is usually for uh, organization wide or companies that have multiple users or editors within Figma. But if you're just a freelancer or starting out and you like the pro features that we cover, you can choose the pro version as well. However, you can just get started for free, download Figma and kind of figure it out. Now they do give a couple bullet points here, like the starter version, you can have three Figma files and three FigJam files, unlimited personal files. So there's a drafts section, kind of like your recent files in Figma, and you can have unlimited files in there. You can have unlimited collaborators. You have access to plugins and templates and the mobile app. On the pro version, you have unlimited Figma files. So while you're limited to three Figma files on the free version, you actually have unlimited on the pro version and you're able to separate and organize those into teams and projects. You can actually have shared and private projects, so you can password protect projects. You can utilize team libraries, which is a huge one with uh, design systems and being able to share that. There's also advanced prototyping and the dev mode, which is in beta right now. However, it's uh, one of those modes that allows you to transition to developers all of your designs. Now, if we scroll down on this page, we'll see that de the dev mode was introduced very recently here in 2023. And right now it's included in all editor seats. So uh, as long as you have that pro plan, you're able to access this. Now, if we compare the features, you can see one of the things that pops up right here is version history. So all of the auto saves and versions of your file uh, that get saved every 30 minutes, you have only 30 days history on the free plan. However, on pro and above, you've got unlimited history. So that's one difference there in the first section. As we scroll down, we'll see that you have access on the pro plan specifically is what we're looking at uh, compared to the free plan. You have access to uh, private projects. So you're able to password protect projects and create kind of invite only spaces for your team to work privately. You can also set prototype sharing permissions, which allows you to share with clients and stakeholders without actually sharing the underlying design file. So you can just share the prototype. Audio conversations is a way to talk directly with collaborators while you're in Figma or FigJam. And then you can transfer projects as well from the pro and up. Now, one of the other things here in the prototyping section, you might have read above that it was advanced prototyping on the pro. That's true. You can create interactive prototypes on free and pro. However, starting even with the videos, you can upload your own videos if they're in your prototype, uh, but you can't do that on the free plan. You can also utilize variables, which is a way to create more dynamic interactions, conditional logic. That's like, if this happens, then do that or else do this other thing. You can create more advanced flows and interactions with this type of logic. You can have multiple actions in a prototyping interaction, and you can also insert expressions. So the prototyping goes even deeper. So if you're looking to create some really advanced prototypes, and that's kind of up your alley, you really have to be on the pro version. But as a minimal prototype, like click this button, go to this page, the starter version works just fine. Now design systems, you can create some design systems on the starter, but you can't have a team library unless you have the pro plan. So if you're working with others and you wanna have a shareable, reusable team design system library, then you need to be on the pro plan to do that. You also have different variable modes, so you can unlock themes and some different things uh, by just setting these different modes. So if you have like a dark mode or a light mode for your app or website, you can define that with variables and just have a quick switch between those two design modes without having to completely redesign the entire app twice. Let's see if we have anything else. Of course we do, the development mode. So the dev mode, which is in beta right now, allows developers to 
kind of navigate the design file and then transform it into code. And then of course, there's another extension here that lets users navigate and inspect Figma design files, kind of collaborate with designers and implement directly in VS code. You can also uh, include web hooks. So that from the pro plan above uh, is included. And then we talked about the password protection. Uh, so you can set passwords on files uh, or keep it open to share work publicly. I think those are the main differences between the free plan of Figma and then the professional plan of Figma. So if any of those kind of sound like something you need, and then if you're unsure, what I would do is just start with the free plan. Just download Figma, start with the free plan. You'll find out, uh, let's go ahead and go over to Figma really quick, actually. So you'll find out that on the home page, you can have just all these different draft projects and you can create new design files up here or new fig jam boards was just like a whiteboarding. Over here on the left, you can see that in teams, you can only really have one team and you can only have three projects organized into that team. Now, sometimes teams could be like the different clients that you have, or it could be like the different projects that your company is working on. And that will be you'll be able to organize all these files into those team projects. You can't really do that uh, with the free version. You can see right here, I'm running out of files in my free team because I have a free team, so I can only have like three files in there. However, you can have unlimited files in your drafts. Uh, there's just no good way to organize them. And then within the file itself, if I double click on this, I'm on the free version of Figma, so I have access to all this stuff, all the design tools and everything. Uh, inside of here, you can only create three pages. So, or actually, no, I can create more than that. Perhaps because this is on my team project. Let's go back. They might have updated this uh, since I last tried this. So I'm going to create a new design project. It's possible you can create more pages now, which is cool. Okay, so it looks like the free version can allow you to create more pages. You used to be able to only create three, but now you can create more. So the pages are helpful because if you have, you can kind of think about your design project as the overarching project. And then you could have like the, if, if it's, if it's a multi, uh, kind of a multimedia design here, like you could have a website and all the website design stuff on page one, all the mobile app stuff on page two, you could have uh, billboards or print graphics on page three that pull in, you know, assets from those, and then you can share a design system through all of them. So you can actually do a lot with the free version. I mean, you can use Figma and you can prototype and do all basic interactions and stuff, but, um, you can't really organize it. So if you go to your homepage, like to be able to share this with your team or be able to actually keep organized, it's one thing to be able to just click in and out of different projects and kind of scroll down this list. It's another thing to be able to go to your projects here on the left-hand side and actually get them organized, get them into projects, and then be able to have a bunch of those. Because if you're working with multiple clients or you're working on multiple projects with multiple people, you really need some kind of organization system to keep all that together so you can go back to it when, you know, inevitably a month from now, a question is asked about something and something needs updated. You don't have to scroll down a list of a hundred different random files. You can actually just go straight to the project. So that's some of the differences between Figma Free and Figma Pro. Like I said, there's a link down below. If you haven't even started Figma, you can go over there and uh, you know just go to figma.com and sign up for free and just try it out. See if you run into any roadblocks as you're utilizing it. Or if you're looking at Figma Pro, you can definitely at least try that out for a month if you want and just see if you like all the new features and the advanced prototyping uh, and if it works for you. That's it. That's kind of free versus pro here in Figma.